Hi all. Um, while we are under lockdown and that's what everybody is talking about, I wanted to actually take some time out to talk about maybe something that's different or maybe not so different. And what has been coming back to me again and again and again are words that I learned. It was a saying and I'm not sure, uh, you know, why at that moment, as a 12-year-old, it made that kind of impact on me that today at 62, it still makes so much sense to me. And that is that compassion means action. Compassion is not about uh, just feeling it. Yeah, of course, one must feel it. One must question it. One must... Uh, feel someone's plight, someone's pain, yes. But unless you go beyond just lip service, unless you turn that concern into what can I do, unless we ask that question, your compassion is cheap, costs nothing to say, oh, how sad, right? So a lot of my writing because as I said as a 12 year old um, this was the motto of an animal shelter that I worked with it, it was called Animal Friends um, and I worked with them They're the wonderful person who ran it and their thing was Animal Friends Compassion Means Action it stayed so a lot of my writing in fact is about empowering and empowered young people who decide to take a stand and do something. Okay, So here's a book for very young children called A Very Naughty Dragon. Um, it's a sweet book. It's a book um, which is illustrated and of course for younger kids uh, as you would see from the title and the cover. It's a unique book for me because I've co-authored it with a nine-year-old girl and that's been fun. But this book and the one before it, this is the second in the series, the first is called A Very Naughty Bear. Both of them have young people or young creatures who decide to take the path of kindness to take the path of saying, oh, this person needs help. Let me try and do it. And yes, sometimes, often, it's not easy. And when we come to talking about what's not easy, I can't help but think of this book being Gandhi, um, which is really about how the Sikhs were attacked. I'm going to give a little bit of a spoiler um, and hopefully many of you have read it but it's what can I do right and this what would Gandhi do that's the question that repeatedly I feel and since I started writing this book and researching more and reading more about Gandhi that I thought here's something that I really really want to ask myself as an individual, what can I do? What would Gandhi do, right? Um, and this line, quote from Gandhi, peace and revolution are not mutually exclusive. That's powerful to me. Peace and revolution are not mutually exclusive. And also, Another quote of Gandhi's, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. So as I said, words are cheap. And so if I'm just a writer, then is it cheap for me to write, to say, do these grand things, do all of this, but I don't do it myself? So I have, over the last three months, really tried to the best of my ability in terms of money, in terms of action, 
in terms of compassion, in terms of putting my action into my words, um, to, to actually do something because I asked myself, what would Gandhi do? And so this is during the time of riots. I'm going to just read a little bit to you. Um, this is way into the book, chapter 13. We need Mahatma Gandhi right now. How I wish I could bring him back somehow. But I can't. I sit very still and I get a very strange thought. At least it's a very strange thought for little old me. It shakes me. As the question rises within me, can I? I don't dare think it. I think another thought. If Gandhi was here, what would he do? If there was this kind of rioting, this kind of pogrom going on, and he was not the Mahatma, but just a teenage boy, what would he do? What could he do as a child? How in his gentle way could he shake this world that needs shaking right now? I read more. I read about peace and revolution. I read a book called <laughs> A Pinch of Salt That Rocked an Empire. It's about the Dandi March. And it strikes me how such a small, seemingly insignificant symbol of salt rocked the, Brit the great British Empire. And I thought, yeah, you don't need to be a big guy. You don't need to be a powerful person on an important seat. Be you. But be an actionable you. Okay? So, um, just a little, little further on, I'm going to talk about overcoming fear Gandhi style. Because yes, Sometimes, doing the right thing, doing the kind thing, stepping forward, that's the difficult thing to do. Is it an impossible thing to do? No, it isn't. Yes, it requires a courage. It requires the strength of your belief to do that right thing. The rioting continues for another day or so. There are rumors that the water supply has been poisoned. One rumor says it's the Sikhs who have done it. Another says it's the Hindus. I don't know what to believe, but I want not to believe that anyone would do such a thing. We all know, need water and poisoned water would kill everyone. It doesn't discriminate, just as Corona doesn't discriminate on religion on caste, on economic welfare. Corona doesn't, doesn't pick depending on what you do or how much money you have or what kind of home you live in. Prince Charles has tested Corona positive, COVID positive, right? Tom Hanks has, and his wife have tested positive and so many others, the Prime Minister of Britain, right? So let's not sit in our ivory towers because unless we act, our ivory towers are useless. Yes, sometimes it requires just, um, just a symbolic gesture and I'd like to share a really moving symbolic gesture. This. What is this? It is... Um, well, I'll read you that part. Pia, one of the young girls in the, in the book. Pia comes to join us. She's been arguing with her parents who have finally come around to at least listening to her point of view. 
and Pia says, the cutting of the hair of sick people is almost like the cutting off of the noses of the statues that the Mughals did, isn't it? It's like apman. It's an insult to the core of the religion, of the culture. What can we do now? Pia stands up and she says, well, I know what I'm going to do. She flourishes a pair of scissors. Wait, wait, what? You can't go around here hurting people. That's not what this is all about. I'm really angry. This is the young boy who has decided to be Gandhi. Gandhiism is peaceful resistance. How are we different if we start attacking people with weapons? <laughs> I'm not attacking anyone, silly. Just wait. Something is going to happen. And pretty soon it does. Pia has called a television station and some press. She has told them about our Gandhi-style children's protest. I'm amazed at how quickly the media has arrived. Pia marches up to the reporters. This is the boy who started it all, she says, pointing to me. Um, it, he's been on a fast Mahatma Gandhi style. Ours is a peaceful protest and only children are allowed. The questions come thick and fast from the media. Where did you get the idea from? Do you think you make a difference? Do you think you can change any minds with this symbolic protest? Have you really been on a fast? What, what more can you do? What are your future plans? Do you want to join politics? Well, we try to answer most, but some questions make us laugh. Of course, this is not about politics. This is about being a human being. I say, and a reporter is furiously writing that down. And then Pia, who's been standing by my side, says, there is one more protest that we think is important. If six hair is being cut, then I too. And with the without the slightest hesitation, she pulls her long plait and in a flash, she cuts it off with the scissors in her hands. It's a symbol. But what is the symbol saying? It's saying, I feel your pain and I will sacrifice for you. I will act. So I really want to say, I'm a writer. I'm not an activist. You may be a student, not an activist. You may be a banker and not an activist. You may be whatever. But there's an there's a, a good human being. There's a kind human being in all of us. Try it. Feels good. More soon. Bye.